Thanks very much. I'm very, very happy to be here today. And like Donnie said, I work for the Cotejo. And the game is changing, and my job is to help change it. So what I'm going to talk to you today about is exactly how I want to change it, exactly what I want to see as the future of IT and IT devices. Because my background, I teach engineers. I think I recognize a bunch of you from my classes. And what I want to really get into here is how am I going to design, as an engineer, the next wave of IT devices? We've all heard about the Internet of Things and how it is the next big wave and all of the connectivity and all of the things that are going to be coming on. But how does that actually change what I do? And how is that actually going to change what all of you guys are going to do? And most important, at least from my perspective, is how does that change what universities do? Especially with respect to engineers. So what really will influence IT product design? How do I think about it? How should you think about it? And then, what really do I need to do to challenge traditional engineering in this space? So, what do I mean about the Internet of Things? Well, okay, here's how I want to characterize it. There's so many different ways I can think about the Internet of Things. Everything from opportunity, products, profit, change in society, change of life. All of these things are good. But where I really want to take you now is I want to think a bit about if you're going to design an IT device, why is it different from the gadgets I have today? I've got pockets full of gadgets. I'm wearing them now. But what really has to change and what has to be new? Well, one of the things that's going to be changing is machine-to-machine -machine interaction. The Internet of Things is going to have a lot of devices talking to each other and talking to us. And they're going to be doing things on our behalf, but in ever-increasing numbers and in ever-increasing diversity. Another thing is going to be how exactly these devices are going to be interacting with humans. Now, there's going to be more set on that a little bit later, but it's going to change because now devices all in the environment and all around you are going to be interacting with you as well. Now, people, because of this, are predicting huge numbers of devices, billions of devices, very, very often, especially when I get into conversations with Ericsson, 50 billion devices, 50 billion. 50 billion. There's, we don't have 50 billion people. Where are the 50 billion devices going to come from? But together, this redefines IT, and it defines what I'm going to call here, in this context, the social internet of things. Now, let's start with 50 billion devices. 50 billion gadgets? No. Where? How am I going to do this? Well, I think it's easy. I'm going to challenge you to that as well. I think 50 billion is easy. Why? Where? Every piece of clothing. Everything you wear, everything you touch, everything that comes into contact with your body will be in some way one of these IT-enhanced or IT property objects. Every door, every room, every place, in every space that you live or work in, every seat in every car, every bus, every subway, anything that moves, every sign, poster, or notice, every piece of paper you handle, anything that goes through the mail, anything that has anything to do with logistics. Every item of food, every space. You can start to realize that when you think about all of these things, 50 billion is probably too small. So that's one thing that definitely characterizes what these new IT devices are about, just the diversity of them. So now we get into this diversity. So I need a new model for IT devices. I need to go beyond the gadget. Here's the model. Here's what it is now. So I maintain that the IT device of the future is an aggregate of these four pieces, and here's how they work together. And here's how I'd like you to start thinking about IT devices that you're going to be buying and interacting with. The first thing is, what are they? Well, the object themselves, the gadget itself, becomes more than just this box full of integrated circuits. It now involves all of these pieces. Some of them familiar. Yep, Internet of Things definitely is going to involve people. You now are going to have attributes that have to something to do with IT, but these other ones as well, media, regulation, spaces, vehicles, furnishings, clothes, money, these are all now things that become objects or devices that have IT properties. Now the next box over here, ergonomics. Ergonomics defines another set of properties that the objects have that allow you to use them. 
So all of these objects now are going to have this huge diversity of ways that you can interact. And these are properties of the object. Very different IT devices now. So everything here, light, sound, command, control, notification, etc. all of these, texture, motion, shape, quality. Quality? Yeah, quality. A way of interacting with things. These two things, objects and ergonomics, come together and they create interaction. This is how people now interact with these things. And the three together, so of course you use them, chat, share, touch, attend, comment, pay. These things together now define the whole of what these IT objects are. We create this new device space of presence. Presence now becomes the fact that we're all here in this room. This all now becomes the devices that, we're, that I'm referring to. This is an IT device. Community become, has aspects of an IT device. Opinion, choice, customs, fashion, recommendation, even emotion. All of this together is what is the IT device of the future. So in order to do this, I have to have a completely new approach. I can't just do it alone as an engineer. So I have to bring in aspects of interdisciplinary design. I have to bring in art. I have to bring in classic design. But this creates the problem. And this is now what makes it the challenge for you. In order to do this as an engineer, I have to realize the differences between an engineer and a classic designer or an artist. As an engineer, I deal with the world of physics, numbers, codified design. But engineers are very different from designers because they are driven by concepts of artistic expression, tacit knowledge, knowledge you gain through practice and experience. How do I put these together? I don't have methods for them, so I maintain our existing engineering processes are not sufficient. They're not good enough. I need something better. I need something more. Let me give you some concrete examples. Here's one, is designing with light. Now, as an engineer, light. The classic approach tells me it's easy to design with light, right? I'm using it for good, everyday, firm things like backlights on displays, buttons that light up, front panels. No, that's not what I want. Now what I want to start moving towards is how do I design with light as a fundamental concept that designs the product? For example, how can I use light in clothing design to enhance its, its sense of fashion so that when you wear it, you create a different, a different sense of self and a different way that you want to interact with other people based on fashion? That's what I mean now by designing with light. Another example is, can I design with music? Can I design with dance? Can I design with motion? So this is an interesting one because this is actually a prototype idea that was developed oh, a few years ago by Hewlett Packard Laboratories and IDEO. But the idea here was, was that the design was such that the dancer created the music. And through motion and the way that the dancer would dance, audio streaming into the device would then be changed, altered, added to by the dancer themselves and then streamed on to another person. So in other words, the dancer was creating the music, not the other way around, as is more of a traditional way. How can I use music and motion in that way? Here's another example, shape. On the traditional side from engineering, I design with shape all the time. Yep, I've got a good IT object here and it should have, it's got circuit boards in it and I need a box that covers it and it should have a certain shape, a certain color. No, I want to go beyond that. I want shape now to dynamically define what the IT device does. It starts to enter its actual function, its actual embodiment. So in this case, these are some drawings that eventually turned into prototypes of devices that worked by changing their shape. They could change their shape in real time by twisting, shrinking, or expanding. So in other words, I could have an enclosure, picture the smartphone of the future, that instead of just having something come up on the display, the actual smartphone can change its shape. It can become round, or heart-shaped, or square, or cork corkscrew-shaped. You send it a message and you communicate that way. Or the device can be any kind of a form factor you would like. Can you design with dynamic shape? And then finally, designing with awareness of energy, for example. 
This is a very interesting area because it's becoming more important as society moves on. So this is an example of another product where it was an interdisciplinary design, a team from Maladalens Hochschulen with some of us at the KTH worked together on a device that would be aware of energy in everyday life. Now, this was part of a national design competition in Sweden. All the universities and whole schools could compete in it. What this thing did is it sat down and said, I am going to not just design with energy as a component, but I'm going to design with energy as part of what defines the functionality of the, of the device. And what this did is it would sit in your living space and look at how you use energy. And then in a very consumer-friendly way, it would indicate back to you, yes, you're being very energy efficient, or no, your lifestyle could use some improvement. If you were wasting energy, Orvar would start to move, and it would start to change its orientation as you watched it. If you were really wasteful, or Orvar would fall right over and practically die. So it was giving you feedback, but again, based on the energy in the environment that was there. And it was definitely done as an interdisciplinary project between two teams. Energy can be taken even further. When you start thinking about if we have the Internet of Things and the social Internet of Things, there's also an Internet of Energy out there as well. How are 50 billion devices going to be powered? 50 billion. So one way of looking at 50 billion devices, if I took 50 billion devices, like say, oh, this one, and I took out the AAA battery that's inside and I put 50 billion AAA batteries together, they would go around the Earth at the equator, any guess? About 55 times. Okay, you can't deal with that many batteries. It's not possible. So we're going to have to get the energy from elsewhere. One way to do it is to make it into the objects themselves. So here's a pair of trousers. Of course, they have an IT component to them. In this case, the researchers were looking at ways to be able to add fibers, cords, things you could weave into the fabric so that the person walking and changing and bending and straightening their leg would start generating power. So the trousers themselves are generating power for their own use. And then finally, I want to go beyond function. Engineers were really good at thinking about function and how to be able to put IT functionality into objects like, for, exa for example, gloves. So this is an example of a device where you can create music by touch and orientation, a gesture-like glove. All right, I can, I can right now design with something like that, but I want to do more. Can I instead design with the whole concept of community? Can community be something that I can design with? Or friendship? Now, this is an example of another glove that was also an interdisciplinary design process, project, between, once again, Maladalen and, and the KTH. But what this glove does is it measures your stress. It's a home healthcare product. The design here is supposed to be very ergonomic and very easy for you to still use your hands, so that is all still there. But the real interesting thing about this is the way the information was used, the way that the product and the IT product was formed. Instead of telling you what your stress level is or your doctor, I mean, you know what your stress level is and your doctor, well, okay, that might be interesting. Instead, what it does is it tells your community of friends. And your friends then help each other, of course. I'm stressed out, but my friends will know this because they're part of this community and they will come and help me as I will help them. Can I use friendship and community in that way to drive my products? Can communities design themselves in that way? That's where I want to go with this. Here's another one that uses very unique ways and community and friendship to drive what it does. So this was one done in, uh, with the KTH and Mobile Life in six where we were looking at using touch and texture and radios to leave traces. So this is, again, this idea of how do I want to interact with people in the future? And what I'm doing is, as I go through a space, I can touch and I can leave tactile and other kinds of messages so that when you come into my space after I'm gone, I can still have those traces communicate my feelings or impressions, some other unique way of interacting with you in that space that you are now sharing, even though I'm not there. Another idea of how do I design with friendship and community. So overall, how do I do it? Now, how do I also design the university to do it? I need formalizations, and I need other ways to be able to do interdisciplinary design like this. So some schools, like Virginia Tech 
in the United States. They're coming here next year to try to transfer what they know to us in this interdisciplinary space. Other schools like California Polytech um, University at San Luis Obispo, they're already starting programs in how to do this kind of interdisciplinary design. We need to know how to do that as well. We have to extend our engineering realization, not turn people into what they're not. I'm never going to turn engineers into artists, but I have to extend the process on how that's done. Here's an example of how we've done it at the Cotejo by taking a classic engineering process and starting to expand it here by having the engineer come up with new methods of interacting with the designers and new processes that can then enhance the traditional spiral design flow. How do I formalize this? How do I make it repeatable? And if you're interested in these sorts of ideas, here's a reference over here that you can look up a little bit later on. So in order to create this kind of idea of an IT internet of things, here's the challenge to you. I need to figure out how to extend engineering practice, both through what you do and then, of course, also what I do at the university. How do I apply these interdisciplinary methods to create social objects? And how can I do it in a way that I can teach them and they're learnable, usable, and practical? If you have ideas, if you have ways that you would like to be able to do this, come and talk to me.